Hey guys, today's video is all about creating a really cool, frankly, relatively easy aquatic, yes, aquatic plant centerpiece. I've been wanting to create this for quite some time and I'm really excited that this is finally all gonna come together today. Now, you can use this centerpiece on your dining table or maybe perhaps on a coffee table. I plan to use this in my family room and I'm gonna place it on my coffee table that I have in there. The main element for my aquatic plant centerpiece is going to be Marimo moss balls and I will also be using some um, aquatic gravel and some other aquatic plants as well. Now for a full list of tools and items that I'll be using today, please check that out in the description. I'm gonna leave a full and complete list down there for you guys. If you're not familiar with Marymo Moss Balls, let me just explain a couple of things right off the bat. First, they are not actually moss, they are balls of algae, and they are native to freshwater, cold northern parts of Japan. Second, they can live for upwards of a hundred years. That's crazy, a hundred years. And they are slow growers. They grow only about five millimeters in diameter per year. And believe it or not, some of these uh, Marimo moss balls in the wild can grow to 12 inches a foot in diameter. So pretty big. Marimo moss balls are most commonly used in people's aquariums with their fish, but they will do just fine and perfectly well in the setup I have in mind here today. That being said, these are living, living plants, some might say, and they need to be cared for. So let me explain some of the basic care tips now. So I went ahead and picked up some Marimo moss ball food, which is basically liquid plant fertilizer. And on the instructions, it explains that you're gonna to wanna to give four drops of this liquid fertilizer per moss ball every other day. And the second thing you're gonna to wanna to know is about each week, you're gonna to wanna to change out your water for fresh tap water. Now, there are some more care tips in terms of light and keeping the Marimo moss balls nice and round and some other general maintenance for these moss balls that I'm going to share with you later in the video. I've also picked up some aquatic plants. I have this aquatic grass-like plant and some bulbs that I've picked up at my local PetSmart and I'm gonna be using those and including them in my centerpiece as well. Now, I did go ahead and decide to use some black uh, gravel, um, some black aquatic gravel. Now, you might want to think about this carefully if you're planning on doing something similar. If you went ahead and got some more typical brown or natural sand colored gravel that might provide a little bit more of a contrast between the color of the plants and the moss balls and um, the sand that you're using. So I'm really curious to see how this all turns out with this black gravel that I've chosen. Now, the other choice that I've gone ahead and already made is the shape of my glass um, vase or vessel, whatever you wanna call it. Now, I've gone for a more shallow and wider, larger diameter uh, piece. Um, I guess the other school of thought would be to go with a less wide, a more narrow, and a taller um, vase, and that way the Marymo moss balls would kind of stack on one another, and that's totally different look, not exactly what I'm going for. I had to choose this because I wanted to include those other aquatic plants, and uh, this shape will give me the opportunity to play around with that. Now, I think ideally what I'm trying to go for is having sort of my aquatic um, grass off to one side, having the gravel slope slightly um, to a sort of deeper end on this end, so a little bit less gravel on this end, and having the Marimo moss balls kind of throughout. I also did pick up some really interesting aquatic plant bulbs. Um, those are uh, one water lily, one water onion, and two of something else that I can't pronounce. And I'm gonna 
have some fun planting these in here as well. I'm not quite sure where, but uh, it's gonna be interesting. And uh, yeah, let's check it out and get started and see how it all turns out. All right, so the first thing is going to be placing the gravel in the container. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that now. All right, hopefully the small bag of gravel is enough to cover the base of this glass piece. Oh, cool. Yeah, so it's super shiny, nice and black. Definitely more than enough to cover the entire base. I don't know if I should stop there, keep going. Let's just stop and take a look. So I went ahead and put about two thirds of the bag of black uh, aquatic gravel in the base. I reserved about a third, if not a little bit less, so that I have some more to place over the aquatic plants if they need a little bit more depth. Now I've gone ahead and removed the grass from the bags that they came in and the instructions uh, state that they come in this gel that kind of keeps the root system kind of all intact and you can go ahead and rinse some of that off. It is non-toxic so I don't think you have to completely get rid of it. Um, I'm keeping what's left on it just so that it keeps it nice and sort of compact. I have several different little units here of grass and I'm going to go ahead and insert those kind of off to one side like I had mentioned at the beginning of this video. All right, so I just placed uh, the aquatic grass-like plants that I picked up and I did it along the edge in kind of a crescent moon shape. And I'm just gonna go ahead and very carefully add the remaining gravel so that I cover up that root system for all of these little guys. Let's see how that goes. All right, so there's still a little bit left, but I'm gonna set that aside. So I did go ahead and add the remainder of the gravel um, in and around the grass. And if you have like a little paintbrush or something that you can use to kind of swipe off the, some of the gravel that's sticking to the grass, then that might help. However, once you add the water, I really do believe that that will kind of not be an issue. So I am ready uh, to add some of these plant bulbs to this arrangement. Um, when I took a little bit of a closer look at the packaging, these are for the background of your aquarium, so they can grow anywhere from 8 to 24 inches. This is clearly not 24 inches tall, so I don't know if I'm going to use all of them. I think I might just plant one or two and kind of hope that maybe one of them is the water lily. I really have no clue which one is which, so if you have any experience with aquarium bulbs and this means something to you, then please... Uh, you know, give a shout out and uh, give a little explanation in the comments down below. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and this one is the smallest bulb, so this wishful thinking on my part, hoping that it is on the smaller side, and I'm gonna go ahead and stick this one in kind of at the bottom of my crescent shape of the grass, and just cover that up and I think that's all I'm going to do for now because I don't want this whole sort of terrarium aquatic centerpiece to be overcrowded by some taller plants. So I'm just going to plant one for now. We'll see what happens. And then, um, you know, down the road, once that starts to grow, I can give you guys an update. So you can check out my Instagram at Tyler Mossop and just keep an eye out for some photos of this down the road. So now the tricky part, I wanna add some cold tap water and I've gotta do that very carefully just to keep everything in place. So wish me luck. Um, I went ahead and filled this up and I've never done this before. So I'm a little bit nervous just that the water itself will kind of move things around. But what I'm hoping for is if I just do it kind of on the edge of the glass that maybe it will have less of an impact. And maybe I'll just rotate this over to this corner where there's nothing um, there. Yeah, so that's not so bad. All right, so just filling this up. Um, and then I can always go back and move around some of the gravel afterwards. So if it 
kind of moves somewhere where I don't want it. So that's going a lot more smoothly than I was thinking it might, so there's that. All right, I'll be right back. I'm just gonna fill this up. So I filled this up basically with about an inch remaining on the top so that it's not so full that I can kind of maneuver it. And luckily I started this whole project on this cutting board and I think that will be really useful uh, when this is all said and done, kind of maneuvering it and getting it to go to the coffee table in my family room where I would like it to end up. Now before, when I was planting the grass, um, all my grass or my what I'm calling my aquatic plant grass um, was all fine, but I uh, forgot to mention that if you do have any sort of brown or um, any blades of this aquatic plant that don't look right, there's absolutely nothing wrong with pruning it uh, a little bit to get it to get rid of those pieces you don't want. There's absolutely nothing wrong with that. Um, as you can see, I have some blades that are. Uh, actually popping out of the water and I kind of think that's kind of cool and interesting so I'm not going to at the moment do any pruning to this and just kind of let it be and see what it kind of develops into over time. So I'm finally ready to add the Merimo moss balls to the um, to this glass vessel here. But before I do that, I wanna share with you guys the remainder of the crucial care tips and kind of some hacks that you're gonna to wanna to know if you yourself are gonna be planting some of these moss balls. So first things first, when it comes to light, these guys do prefer low light. Um, if they are getting too much light, they will start to brown. Um, if that's the case, you're gonna to wanna to rethink where you have your whole thing set up and maybe move it to somewhere where it's getting less light. Um, they should be able to recover and uh, the algae should turn green again. The next thing that you're gonna want to keep in mind is if you let your moss balls just sort of sit and hang out in the tank without any intervention, they will start to grow outwards and you're gonna want to keep them nice and round. So there are a couple of things you can do to keep these guys nice and spherical um, so that they don't grow and just kind of a weird pebble shape. So the first thing you can do is uh, anytime you're near the centerpiece, you can just use a chopstick or something to just kind of agitate the water in a way that gets these guys moving as they would in nature. And the other thing you can do is uh, when you're changing out the water or whenever really is you can take out your moss ball and just very gently just roll it in between your hands like so. And these two strategies are best to keep these nice and spherical um, so as they grow they will maintain that shape. All right, so if you do pick these up, um, again, I got these at my local um, PetSmart. You can get these online on Amazon, etc. cetera. Um, so to change things up and have a little bit of variety, I got some smaller ones and I also picked up some larger ones as well. So I'm just gonna go ahead and start to put these guys in the centerpiece and let's see how it turns out. So I was a little bit worried about the black gravel, but I think because this is gonna be on a coffee table and sitting a little bit lower, I think when people are sitting around on sofas and seating around the coffee table, there will be a tendency to kind of look um, down and through the open portion of this. And I think you guys will see in a second that this black gravel is really not gonna be a problem whatsoever. So the other thing uh, that's worth uh, noting is um, these guys should be on the bottom sitting on the gravel if any of them do however sort of start to float to the top that just means that there is a air bubble in the Mary Mo moss ball so there's no harm in just sort of gently squeezing that air bubble out if that's the case um, you know give them a little massage and then you can place him back uh, in there 
So, so far I have four in there. I'm gonna see if I can find a couple bigger ones, throw those last details in there, and then I'm gonna give you a shot of the final centerpiece. So hold on, and uh, so excited to show you guys how this thing turned out. It's a good idea to keep um, these containers that they originally came in because when you are cleaning out the water or changing the water out, uh, if you have these little vessels, you can put some water and some food in there and store them in there in the interim. Um, so yeah, don't throw away these containers that they came in. All right, so I've added all of the uh, Mary Mo Moss Balls. One, two, three, six. So there are a total of 10 in there. Um, now that they're in their new home, I'm going to add some of the food. So if I remember correctly, you're gonna wanna add four drops every two days. Sorry, that's my dog whining in the background there. So four drops every two days, and that's per um, each moss ball. So I have 10 times four, that's 40. So I'm just gonna go ahead and do 40 um, drops uh, so that these guys, three. All right, I think that's give or take around 40. Uh, so that should be a nice little start for these guys in their new home. So the final piece has all come together. Let me know what you guys think and share your comments in the comment section down below. Do you have Mary Mo Moss balls? How have you set them up? I'm so interested in hearing from you guys. That's it from me for today. Miss you already. See you next Saturday.